and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. My name is Kasha, I am your host, and in today's video I'm going to catch you up on what's been going on with my Better Breeding series and why it's kind of been not really happening. Well, there's a lot that's been happening behind the scenes, but not enough to like make multiple videos on, so I thought I would just like cram it all into kind of one update video that will kind of get you up to date on what's been happening and hopefully soon, within like a couple weeks or so, we're gonna have babies because we have babies with every other fish. I have Mahachai babies, I have Umbella's babies, I have Ocelotus babies, I, I have shrimp babies, I have Plinko babies, there's babies everywhere, but oddly enough, there are no domestic betta splendid babies. If you're new, you might want to check out the video where I show you the pair that I wanted to get for the 2020 betta breeding series. They are both um, placats and there are marbles, more specifically the blue rim marbles. And I, I wanted to try something different because in the past I've worked with koi bettas, which are marbles as well, and they were kind of a lot of fun and I wanted to try something slightly different. So I got a pair and the male got sick, so I decided to first set him aside and go through his treatment, make sure I don't stress him out, while I continued to condition the female. And I decided to try breeding her with another male called Angry Boy, who is also a placat. He is also a marble as well, but he's got really nice form. So he doesn't have the color I want, but he's got really good finish. So I thought that that would like bring better form into the line itself. If I started to work on the line, so I thought I would try him out. Uh, either of the fish have never spawned before, so it's always a little tougher to work with beginner uh, fish that are not necessarily experienced in breeding. So I put them together and things looked pretty well, except the next day he wasn't really sure what to do and he got frustrated and kind of beat her up, which is part of the process of breeding. There's always that risk and there's always risks of injury. So I separated them and kind of restarted to recondition the female, reconditioned him while I was finishing the treatment of the other blue rim male. So during this time, the female's fins grew back completely. She was looking really great, doing fine. And by then, the other male uh, finished his treatment and he was doing well, so I tried those two. And what happened was another completely weird thing where instead of uh, trying to go after her or trying to attempt to spawn, this male was super distracted in looking at his own reflection or trying to beg for food. I had to block off the entire tank and he still was trying to like find a way to like look at himself. He was really, he's a very narcissistic boy. Um, so that didn't work out. And then once again, I have to pause, take the fish out, recondition again, give them a break. Cause you can't just like try to spawn back to back, like keep throwing different pairs at each other. You have to take it slow because you have to keep in mind the welfare of the fish and you have to kind of pause, look at the situation as a whole and see if it's worth trying to attempt to breed the female again. If things didn't work out, look at, you know, what condition she's in and your other fish as a whole. So after that, I reconditioned her again, as well as angry boy. And I thought, okay, Let's try her with Angry Boy again because he's an inexperienced breeder, so maybe the second time things will work out. And surprisingly, things went a lot better the second time, so they actually got to the point where they did start to wrap. Um, she just didn't release any eggs and he wasn't doing it right exactly. Uh, I didn't want to necessarily film them because I didn't want to distract them in any way. If you want to see what it looks like when a male is trying to figure out how to spawn and isn't really doing a very good job, I have a really good video when I tried to spawn my uh, previous koi marble male Arnold and there's two videos on that one where he failed completely and it was his beginner attempt and then the second video was where he kind of finally figured it out and was spawning correctly so it's very cool to see the two different behaviors so definitely check those videos out they'll be down in the comments as well as in the description magical moment in all its glory so here he is rapping this time I actually got the footage of him doing it and he's still pretty awkward but eh you know does the job. So he tried to spawn with her. There was good attempts being made, but after a while, you know, as fish try to breed, if nothing comes of it, they will start to get frustrated. So the male kind of started going after her again. At this point, I decided to remove them once again and recondition. So what I'm going to try to do is 
try one more time because I don't want to put the female through any more um, stress of spawning. Although it is a natural behavior and uh, if you watch other uh, bettas, especially wild spawn, there is, you know, some stress involved and it's part of it and it's okay. But you just have to, as a breeder and as a pet keeper, you just have to like figure out where's the fine line of, you know, what is too much and what is um, not enough. So in this case, I feel like she's in a really good shape and now that they've had some experience, it's worth trying again. So I'm in the process of reconditioning them and I'm going to let them try to spawn one more time. If it doesn't work, I am gonna consider trying to get some different pairs. Uh, usually why I'm hesitant to get a type, uh, a lot of fish to spawn, like most breeders will have um, a selection of breeding stock. So they'll have a lot of different pairs they could potentially try to match up and breed and some pals, pairs will fail, some pals, pairs, pails, pairs, I can't wear it, some pairs will be successful. So because I'm not necessarily like a full committed breeder, I only spawn my domestic bettas once a year, predominantly for documenting it and educational purposes. I don't really keep a lot of betta splendents and I do keep a lot as pets. So my, what you would refer to as I guess breeding stock are technically pets as well. And all of them get to uh, live in a tank of some sorts, whether it's, you know, a big 20 gallon, tall or a divided tank or a smaller um, uh, better kit. Everyone gets a home. So because I do this and I don't jar all my adult fish permanently, I don't have the space to have a lot of fish to work with, which unfortunately is a limitation, but is definitely something um, I'm willing to work with because I do like keeping my fish as pets. I kind of like the setup that I'm working with. So. Hopefully I'll be updating you guys in the future. We're gonna try again. I am gonna take my time to condition both the male and the female. I don't wanna rush anything. And we will try one more time just to see if it works out. And if not, well, we're gonna kinda of look into trying to purchase yet another pair to see if that will work out. So that's kind of the plan. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this little story time of me catching you up on kind of what's happened. This this does happen when you breed bettas. You will have a lot of successes and you'll have a lot of failures and it's okay. It's not necessarily a reflection on, uh, you know, you as, you know, a fish owner or a breeder because different fish have different personalities, they have different experience. Uh, with my very first betta breeding series, I got really lucky and I had success right away. I would, I guess, refer to it as beginner's luck. So that definitely was like the best series I've had so far. So I'll link that down below as well. It I was a complete beginner but that was a really, really cool experience. And there was a lot of good information in there, even though it was a beginner series, because as I stumbled across different problems and I had to solve them either by doing research or talking to other breeders and hobbyists, I think these things are some things that you might encounter yourself. So if you're thinking about breeding bettas in the future, or if you're a better breeder now and just kind of looking for extra information here and there, I definitely recommend checking that out as well as my other series. I have a ton of playlists. Uh, every series has their own playlist so you can check them out. Um, the failures, the successes, I have all of it documented. I like sharing all of this with you. And that's kind of the update of what's been happening with my 2020 series. Hopefully things will work out and we will have a cool series where we can document the little babies as they grow up and hopefully eventually I'll be able to sell my babies to you and maybe you'll be able to have a creative pet keeping betta and something unique which is a betta that you actually get to see grow up from a tiny little baby to the juvenile which is kind of rare not a lot of people get to do that and I, I think it's cool that I am able to do this for you so that's kind of the update and that's it so I hope that you enjoyed uh, this kind of simple little update if you like this uh, video or this channel in general, if you kind of stumbled upon it, be sure to subscribe. I have a lot of different videos. Not all of them are better related. I do keep other species. I keep cichlids, shrimp, uh, I have plecos, and I also have my other pets. I have a border collie named Banana. I have two kitties, and now apparently I have a crested gecko. So there's, there's a lot of cool critter videos here and there. I think that you might be able to find something you like either in the future videos or if you want to peruse through some of my older videos, there might be some cool little goodies for you to watch. So with that being said, I hope that you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!